John Rigby and Company Limited, is a gunmaking firm founded by John Rigby in 1775 in Dublin. The company was established by the first John Rigby in Dublin, Ireland, apparently in 1775. His grandson, also John, opened a London branch in 1865, and Dublin operations had ceased by February 1897. The company is now owned by Luca and Ortmeyer Gropa and is based in Vauxhall, central London, under the supervision of managing director, Mark Newton. John Rigby and Company Builds rifles based on Mauser barreled actions and double rifles based on its Rigby Bissell 1879 patent rising bite action. Rigby also offers a serial number research service, refurbishes vintage Rigby's for owners and collectors around the world, and maintains a Rigby collection in its showroom. Rigby label from the early 1900s Some documents suggest the firm was established in 1735. However, since the first John Rigby was born in 1758 in Dublin and entered the gunmaking trade there in 1775, Rigby today claims that is its founding date. The surviving business ledgers date from 1781 and show that by then John Rigby was making under his own name, shotguns, rifles, muskets, spring guns, carbines, blunderbusses and pistols to client specifications and a wide range of prices. Rigby was nearly bankrupted during the Irish Rebellion of 1798 when the government seized the arms on his premises, those belonging to the firm and to its clients, presumably to keep them out of the reach of rebels. However, by 1810 John Rigby had rebuilt his business and, in addition to sporting guns, was making, updating and repairing thousands of guns for Ireland's police, military, postal and custom services. After the founding John Rigby's death, in 1818, his sons William and John Jason Rigby operated the businesses W and J Rigby from circa 1820 to 1865. A period that spanned flintlock, percussion, pin fire and needle fire ignition and marked the start of the modern metallic cartridge era. Rigby was a leader in barrel making and rifling technology and, at the time, it was also recognized for its high-grade dueling pistols. The third John Rigby, born in 1829 in Dublin and educated in science at Trinity College, took over in 1858 when William, his father, died. It was this John Rigby who brought the firm to international prominence. In 1865, capitalizing on the awards his family's guns had earned at the Great Exhibition in London in 1851 and at the Paris Exhibition of 1855. In 1865 John Rigby opened a store at 72 St. James's Street in London's West End. Sometime in the 1890s, Rigby sold his Dublin operations to Trulock and Harris and became a bona fide member of the small circle of elite gunmakers who catered for London society. Like his grandfather, the third John Rigby was a top target shot and developed the Rigby target rifle for competition use. He won several Wimbledon Cups and, for 28 years, he helped form the Irish national shooting team. Rigby also won the Abercorn Cup and the first Gordon Bennett Cup, and was Irish champion three times. Between circa 1860 and 1875, the Rigby 451 caliber muzzle loader was the match rifle of choice throughout the United Kingdom. In October 1874, one such rifle was presented to Lt. Col. George A. Custer, the Irish team had dined with him, and President and Mrs. Ulysses S. Grant, in Chicago. The Irish were on an American tour following the first international rifle match at the Creedmoor Range in New York. There, John Rigby had posted the highest individual scores among all competitors. During the period from the Crimean War to the First World War, every facet of firearms and ammunition underwent radical change and thousands of related patents were filed in Britain, the United States and Europe. The areas of greatest interest were military rifles and, because of their prestige, top-shelf sporting guns. John Rigby and Company was deeply involved in creating guns and cartridges for both markets. Because of his expertise, in 1887 the British government appointed John Rigby superintendent of the Royal Small Arms Factory at Enfield Lock. There, Rigby and his large staff resolved design and production problems for a new rifle and its cartridge, the 303 caliber Lee Enfield, which in various forms went on to serve as the principal battle rifle for the United Kingdom until 1957. By government policy, at the age of 65, in 1894, John Rigby retired from government service. He returned to the family firm with the latest knowledge on repeating rifles, smokeless powder, metallurgy, rifling and bullet design, as well as international contacts at the highest levels of gunmaking. One of these was Peter Paul Mauser, and, in 1898, 
Rigby was appointed the exclusive importer and distributor for Mauser rifles and components for the British Empire. For sale under his family name, John Rigby also developed sporting versions of the G98 Mauser rifle and its ammunition, notably the 7x57M infantry round. With hunting bullets, this became a highly successful stalking cartridge known as the 275 Rigby. In 1912, John Rigby and Company lost the exclusive British sales contract to a member of the Mauser family, but Rigby continued to base its magazine rifles on Mauser actions and still does so today. Among professional and sporting hunters in India and Africa, Rigby became known as the aristocrat of bolt action rifles. In addition to its 275, Rigby developed an equally successful medium heavy game round known as the 350 Rigby, and its rimmed counterpart for double rifles, the 350 No. 2. At John Rigby's request, in 1900 Mauser began to develop a stretched version of its G98 action for larger cartridges. This became known as the Magnum Mauser and has served as the foundation for countless bolt-action big-game rifles ever since. The larger action was originally meant for Rigby's interim. 400 slash 350 round, but in 1911 the company introduced the 416 Rigby cartridge for rifles built on the Magnum Mauser action. This was the first magazine rifle that could perform on a par with the powerful Nitro Express double rifles, for one-third to one-fifth of their prices. John Rigby was well-versed in Nitro Express cartridges as well. In 1898, with the help of the Curtis's and Harvey Gunpowder Company, he had introduced the first of them, the Rigby. 450 Knee. In 1899, however, the colonial government of India began to restrict. 450 caliber rifles and ammunition, which forced British gunmakers to develop a flood of variations to avoid the India ban. The most popular of these proved to be the 470 Nitro Express, and John Rigby and Company adopted this as its standard heavy double rifle load. In addition to the pioneering Nitro Express cartridge, Rigby was also noted for the unique vertical bolt or rising bite action, used only on its best grade double rifles and shotguns. Based on the Rigby Bissell patent of 1879, this is a complex and massively strong locking system with a post that rises vertically out of the break-off into a U-shaped loop extending rearward from the top rib of the barrels, as a third fastener. Between 1879 and 1933, Rigby built approximately 1,000 rising bite guns and rifles in many different bores. Today, these are coveted by shooters and collectors. Within a few weeks after the first new rising bite action passed London proof, in November 2014, Rigby received orders for more than a dozen such rifles. Following the unveiling of the first completed modern rising bite in January 2016, Rigby received over 20 further orders for rising bite shotguns and rifles. John Rigby died in 1916, leaving a prosperous business in the hands of his son, Theodore. After Theodore Rigby's death, in 1951, the company was acquired by Vernon Harris, who was a solicitor, businessman, international match rifle shot and holder of the Royal Warren. After Mr. Harris' death in 1965, his widow sold the business in 1968 to a team of investors led by David Marks. Marks contracted with J. Roberts & Son, a London gun company established in 1959, to build Rigby guns. Paul Roberts, Joseph Roberts' son, took over Rigby in 1982 and operated it until 1997. D.H.L. Black's book, Great Irish Gunmakers, Messrs. Rigby, 1760-1869, was published in 1992. In 1997 Paul Roberts sold the Rigby name and other intellectual property to Neil Gibson of Texas, but kept the right to continue building certain Rigby guns and rifles in England, while Gibson began making Rigby weapons in California. In 2010, two American investors, Jeff Meyer and John Reed, acquired the assets of John Rigby and Company. Duh. They returned the manufacturing to London, J. Roberts and Son, and published the book Rigby, a grand tradition. The new owner also settled various trademark disputes and secured the historic Rigby archives. In 2013 Rigby was sold to Al and O Holding that owns J.P. Sauer & Sohn, Sig Sauer Inc. Blazer, and Mauser which has historic ties to Rigby including a collaboration prior to World War I on the development of the Magnum Mauser action for the Rigby. 416 Cartridge LNO repatriated Rigby entirely to London, where it now has an office, showroom, and a factory at 13 to 19 Pensbury Place, SW8, in London's Vauxhall District. 
Rigby rifles and guns were also popular among the royalty of India and Asia, including Sheikh Abdullah and the Emir of Afghanistan as well as the Nawabs, Rajas, Maharajas, Maharanas and other rulers of the princely states of Alwar. Barar, Bharatpur, Bhopal, Bajawar, Idar, Jalawar, Chind, Jodhpur, Kerali, Kashmir, Kairpur, Kutch, Patiala, Pooch, Rewa, Serguja, Tikari, Udaipur, and Oliver. John Rigby and Company. Held royal appointment too. Thanks for watching.